Alright, hey guys, today we're going to be making some Super Nintendo reproduction games. Uh, sure, you can just go online and actually, you know, buy reproduction games, and you'll be paying money for pretty much just pirated copies of games. So, instead we're going to be making our own. We're going to be using a method that is using a programmable Super Nintendo cartridge, basically. So, yes, there is a way you can actually desolder the chips and solder in your own, and while that is pretty cool, and I do want to do that one day, this is a lot easier, especially if you don't have the uh, equipment to resolder the EEPROM chips. We're going to be using the Kazoo cartridge, so let's just go ahead and look at what you need. Each of these cartridges run you around $20. It's $21 for the 4 megabyte version which holds most games. There's an 8 megabyte version that can hold slightly larger games, which are much less common, for $23. And then there's a 12 megabyte version which for $27. But don't get a 12 megabyte version because uh, it can cause problems with smaller games. So unless you really need it, don't buy the 12 megabyte version. 8 and 4 should work fine. Alright, so you need to order the Flash or 2 if I didn't mention that already. So there's a few options. There's the SNES only version only for infinite life carts, so you can't dump your SNES games with this. Uh, and then there's the SNES and Famicom, and the, sorry, SNES and NES version, which is the one I got. So there's the unit, and here's what the cards look like. As you can see, it has the battery for save data. Over here it's labeled, this is the 8 megabyte version. And we got some chips. Alright, so today we're going to be making Legend of Zelda, the Japanese version, and Secret of Mana. So, the official software works it just has a lot of steps so until he's able to fix this and make it a little bit more user friendly also the readme file that comes with the device needs to be updated but until then we're going to use some alternate software that uh, the official creator said might work better so let's go ahead and download it here's a page I'll have a link to this in the description let's go ahead and download both alright so let's get both open Alright, and let's find a place on our computer for them. I already have a folder called Flash Ness. That's just what we call it. And then just bring everything you need in. Alright, the first thing we're going to need to do is update the bootloader of the actual flashing device. This thing is already flashed for using the official software. So if you want to use any alternate software, we're going to have to actually basically almost install custom firmware on it, I guess you would call it. Alright, so you have the power cable here and on the other side by this really really bright LED is a switch. So let's, let's go ahead and unplug this real quick. This switch has two positions. When it's facing the right by the LED, that means it's in normal run mode. When you flip it to the left, that puts it in bootloader mode so you can actually flash a new firmware to it. So that's what we're going to do. Put it in bootloader mode. Okay, so the first step is make sure the device is unplugged. And it says, um, when you update the firmware, which is what we're going to do, we will lose NES support. So, that's just temporary. If we want to get NES support back, we can just go back and flash the original uh, firmware. But we're, I'm not too worried about that right now. Alright, so here's our stuff. Let's go ahead and install the drivers. Install driver. Now, the next thing we got to do is go ahead and install the new bootloader we're going to be using. So that's what firmware is about. Let's go ahead and plug it in. It is now in flashing mode. Remember that's what we changed the switch for. Alright, to install the new bootloader for this custom flashing program, we're just going to run update mod. And you can see it's going. Alright, as you can see it said a new USB device was plugged in. And this all went through and now I don't see any errors. So that means we should be good. Go ahead and press enter. Now we're going to unplug the device real quick and switch the switch back, or flip the switch back, to run mode so we can actually start flashing. Alright, so now let's go ahead and try to run the flashing program. You can turn off this little checkbox if you want to not have it bother you every single time. Alright, and here we go. Interface core version, and it says Kazoo connected, or Kazoo connected. So that means it's actually able to detect the device. Let's go ahead and go through uh, data type, what type of data we're going to flash. But you'll need to know if your game's a low ROM or high ROM game or not. I already know Zelda's a low ROM game. I'll show you how to do that in a second. But there's a switch right on top of here. On the left is low, on the right is high. Flip it to whatever you need. And when you put the cartridge in the actual device or in the flasher, you want to make sure that the USB cable and all the chips are facing towards the chips on here. 
So you want the battery clip to be facing away from the power cable or the USB cable. Go ahead and plug it in. All right, so what we're gonna do is click this button by ROM file name. You scroll all the way over, there's a button. And let's go ahead and click on our game. All right, and it says, and here's our game information. We got Legend of Zelda, um, board compatibility, and it says the game is a low ROM game. So that's right. If uh, the game was a high ROM game, we want to switch that switch I was showing you on it before to high ROM. Now, low ROM does not mean how big your game is. Low ROM just means that it, depend, it determines how the memory is handled in the game or something like that. So it's not the size of the game, it's how the game runs. All right, so it says cart size is 8 megabyte SNES. It already detected that. Uh, data type, 1 megabyte large page. Uh, it sounds about right. I'm not sure exactly. Let's do recheck. Anyway, let's just let it use all the default options it loaded from the game. All right, so now that we made sure everything was set up right, let's go ahead and flash the game. Click Execute, Write ROM. Done, Write Complete. Let's go ahead and test it out on a real Super Nintendo. All right, we're gonna test this out in a clone console real quick. As you can see, I have an actual, just a Super Famicom cartridge, which is not in very good shape. Just gonna use this so it, the board doesn't get damaged. As you can see, it fits perfectly. All right, and if you want to do it the maximum legal way, what we're going to do for the second test is we're going to use a personal dump of Secret of Mana that's completely unmodified. So let's say you did have a Super UFO 8, and you dumped this game, and you want to play it in English. So here's how you do it. Here's a dump of Secret of Mana 2. Again, it's in UFO format, so that means it's a direct dump, no trimming, no anything. Okay, it's 100% in Japanese, 100% untouched. All right, so let's go ahead and load that up in this program. All right, so first thing we're going to do, load up the game. Um, as you'll notice, UFO files don't show here. So if you want to show other file types, just type in asterisk dot asterisk, press enter. Let's go ahead and load up Mana 2. It says Mana 2 is a high ROM game. And it says, uh, is it compatible with the INL boards? Yes. So let's go ahead and flip, switch to high. Let's leave it in this case. Where's the front? And remember, the battery has to go away from the cable. So if you are using a like case, just turn it around backwards and plug it in. Alright, so we have a few more options here. Like example is an auto fix ROM checksums. This does absolutely nothing gameplay wise. It's not important basically. Long story. Alright, so let's load a patch file because we want to play it in English. So here's the English patch. So now we're doing all these things. Auto detect cart size. We're just leaving everything the same. The only other thing we turned on was auto fix ROM checksums which does not affect how the game plays at all. It's just a little nice feature. All right, and it says checksums okay, checksums max calculated. So let's go ahead and write this to the cartridge. Remember, it's a high ROM game. So let's go ahead and write it. All right, first step again, erasing cart. All right, it says write complete, so let's go ahead and test this thing out. This was done using an official dump of the game with no modifications whatsoever. This was modified and trimmed to the size of the file you normally find if you're just downloaded online. So if this works, then we can pretty much use any type of Super Nintendo game. So let's go ahead and try it out. All right, final test of dumped game, patched with English, and burnt all in one go. And there we go. Should have done it in my Super Famicom for better sound quality, but this is the one that was plugged in. So this is what you get. All right, so the patching, auto patching doesn't seem to have worked, but the game actually flashed. So that's the most important part. So I guess just patch the files before you go through. 
I'll do that off screen real quick and just test that out and then I'll be back here. Let's go ahead and boot it up. There we go. English patch is now loaded, sweet. All right, so that, and this is from an actual dump, so that means it supports manually dumped games or trimmed or whatever you want, so. Yep, all right, so final thoughts on this thing. It's pretty cool. Uh, some minor disadvantages are that the flashing, the flasher uses a USB type B. Good luck finding, it doesn't come with a USB cable. Good luck finding one of these around your house. Nobody uses these anymore except for like printers or whatever. Um, but the cartridges themselves are pretty cool. The fact that they can, the, even the eight megabyte ones work just fine with, the, with pretty much 90% of the library that doesn't use enhanced chips, of course, this won't work on like Super Mario RPG or anything. Um, come, they come with batteries, so that's pretty nice too. And look how wide these pins are. That's pretty awesome. Basically that means that even if your Super Nintendo has like a slightly bent um, connector or whatever, it should still make a really nice contact with it. And the fact that you can switch from high ROM to low ROM with one flip of a switch means pretty easy flashing. And look at that logo. I really like that logo. It's put on there very nicely. So overall, if you want a not super inexpensive, but easy way to make your own 100% legal repro repros, now you have a way. Uh, I will eventually will do a video on the soldering method, but that's a lot of extra stuff I have to buy. So um, maybe in the future. All right, see you guys later. Bye.